Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So a couple weeks or so ago, I did a video about the X-Carve and my initial kind of likes and dislikes about the X-Carve. And in that video, one of the things I mentioned is the fact that I disliked the dust collection because it had not yet been delivered. And so it has been delivered. And I kind of just want to walk everyone through the dust collection system and talk about the things that I found about it since it's been delivered. Things I like, things I don't like, and just some uh, what I'll characterize as idiosyncrasies that are probably pretty important. So uh, I'm going to cut over to the uh, GoPro. Uh, the, the audio there is not very great. I just want to warn you, but I'm going to cut over to the GoPro and kind of show you the live action shots of me pointing out some issues about the, um, about the dust collection. All right, stand by. Okay, so here we have the X-Car with its dust collection system attached, and I will walk, through, walk you through all the pieces and parts. So right there, you have the dust boot collected, I'm sorry, connected to the machine itself. So here is the dust collection boot with the, the hose adapter and then these arms that make it adjustable um, up and down from the machine. And the difference between this dust collection system and others is that you adjust the, the height of the boot above the material and it's connected to the, to the gantry plate here. It doesn't move up and down with the spindle. And so you have a fixed height of your dust collection over your work material, which is very good. And it's not uh, interfering necessarily with this spindle mechanism. And I'll get to uh, one issue there in a minute. And so the way you attach it, is you simply let me slide out here you slide it in and then you slide it out so there's these magnets on the side right here Can you see that uh, right there yeah some magnets that uh, also have uh, opposing facing magnets in here that you slide it in and then you can loosen tighten and loosen these these bolts right here and then you adjust the height of the dust collection system up and down based on what your work holding, the current work holding is. So let me move this up and kind of tighten that down. All right, and I'm going to show you one issue that I had with the dust collection system. Stand by. Okay, so here is the bottom of the dust collection system. And you can see that there's this acrylic plate right here. And I actually, hopefully I can get this in the camera view here. I actually broke this plate. You can see that there. I'm trying to get a good angle. Um, I broke the plate because the arms here were set kind of high because of the what I was cutting and the way I was cutting it. And the base here of the router actually hit this when it, the router was coming down, but this is at a fixed height. So it started pushing down into it and actually cracked this. Uh, now, I absolutely was not expecting that at all. Um, I kind of sort of thought that, uh, you know, the spindle was kind of come down into the hole, which is what it's designed to do. And I'll get a little better picture here. So the spindle was coming down into the hole uh, like it was supposed to, but then the base here hit this and kind of pushed on that. It didn't uh, harm the, the cut that, uh, the, as far as I'm aware of, but it did, uh, was something that wasn't expected because I had this set pretty high because I had my clamping system here and it was clamping system was interfering with a with this kind of dust uh, I don't know these I don't know what they are nylon things I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what they're called I should probably maybe go with that here is the hose uh, for me it is connected I mounted the the holder here in the back left corner of the system instead of the front right which is uh, how it was designed actually and that's better for me because the my it comes down here into my vortex system my Oneida um, Separate the dust uh, system and then into the little shop vac that I bought here now I got a little uh, two and a half gallon shop vac, but it's still 5.5 horsepower So it's got plenty of, of capacity to uh, pull the dust out But I just keep this in the shelf here in the bottom and then it runs into the the dust extraction system here And it works very very well. Now, I did 3d print some adapters here and you can see there's one there, um, but I printed the adapters uh, just to keep the, the hoses nice and tight. So I want to show you how the dust collection system, one of the major gripes I have with that. And I'm going to remove uh, the boot here. 
just to make it easier to show. So the machine here I bought has homing switches and the first thing you have to do when you use the machine before it'll actually do anything is home. And so what homing does is brings the machine all the way forward here and then all the way to the left. And you can see right here, that's exactly what happens every single time I home. This arm right here hits the, the gantry plate here, the face plate. Uh, and let me move this up out of the way. Super high. And slide this over. Now you can see there's a fair amount of travel here. And in fact, if you have this kind of low, which I actually typically do have it right around there. And when you home, it hits really low on the plate right here. And then I'll slide it up out of the way. Um, that's, uh, you know, almost an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch worth of travel. And if it is low, it'll actually impede the machine's ability to home itself, which is hugely problematic when you can't do anything with the machine until it homes. Now, the, the, there's a setting that you can turn off the auto home thing that you, you can use the machine before it homes, but uh, by default, it's, it's not set up that way. And, and quite honestly, I think this is a massive oversight on, the, uh, on behalf of Inventables and the, the people who make this uh, dust boot. That it, 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 that it hits this. Now, you know, maybe it's not, oh, maybe it's unavoidable if you want to look at it that way, just by the nature of the design, but it seems to me that, that maybe these arms here, if you look down on it from on, on top here, these arms could just be a little bit shorter. This angle here could be a little, uh, sh a little more, you know, down, and you only need about maybe, is that about half an inch ish? About a half an inch off the the length here and it won't it wouldn't interfere with the dust or with that gantry plate there so i just again i think that's an oversight that uh that could be worked on and, and you know uh, maybe i'll maybe i'll just try and 3d print me some of these uh these arms and futz with a little bit and make a recommendation but i definitely want to give some feedback to some inventables on this i don't know how it is that they um missed that and i'll be honest with you uh i have not used my machine um, there hasn't been a, an instance where I've used my machine where I haven't, since I've had the dust collection, where I haven't had this arm hit the gantry plate, not once. Um, every single time I power up the machine, uh, I, I home it without thinking. It's kind of ingrained in the, my process. I forget about this, it hits it, and then I gotta kind of start over. It's super annoying, but you know, it is what it is. So uh, that's kind of the overview of of the system and some of my, uh, I guess what I'll characterize is my dislikes about it right now. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, mostly what I'll characterize as my dislikes of the dust collection system. So the, the bars on the left and the right hand side of the gantry, the Z gantry that run into the homing, uh, the front plate uh, that, that cause issues with homing, that's a real problem, but it's not so insurmountable. Um, the, the issue with the, the acrylic on the bottom where the, the router hit the, hit it and cracked it again, I think that was more operator error than anything. Uh, I think, I feel like there should have been some instructions that kind of told me that, Hey, maybe you might want to avoid something like this. I don't know, but it just seems a little, um, I don't know how to put it. It just seems like something that should have been pointed out before I went ahead and used it. Now, so I didn't really talk too much in the, the previous clip about what I like about the system. And, and, and I gotta be honest with you, um, it's really easy to use. It is super effective. It was a little cumbersome to put together, but it is a tremendous add-on to the to the X-Curve. So in my Shape Oco, I, I did have dust collection. I, I kind of, um, I kind of uh, retrofitted it with some those brushes, if you will, and it worked. It worked pretty well. But the new dust collection system of the X Carve, because it is it is level to the board. It doesn't move up and down with the gantry when the when the spindle moves up and down. Really makes a huge difference to how you're doing your removal of your your dust, and it just really keeps things contained. Now I will tell you I did use a quarter inch bit actually a couple different times and because of the way the dust collection sits where the 
Um, I'll try to do it this way where the spindle is here and the dust collection is here. So if you get super far forward on the material, the, the hose, the extraction of the dust collection system doesn't uh, actually sit over the material anymore. So you lose kind of that, that vacuum suction. So chips have a tendency to fly out a little bit. But, you know, overall, compared to not having it or trying to hold the shop vac for a while, maybe even an hour, um, it is definitely two thumbs up, no doubt. So if you get the opportunity, I got to tell you, so so the X-Carve dust collection system, I believe, is a, is a resell of the thing called the Socket. Uh, which was a, a Kickstarter way, mm, probably two, three years or so ago. I did have the opportunity to get in on the Socket uh, boot on the Kickstarter, and I chose not to uh, because I did not have a stock gantry on the Shape Oko. So uh, I skipped over that, and, and I have it now, and I got to say I like it. it. It's awesome, the magnetic uh, connection, uh, being able to see into it through the 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 clear acrylic is really amazing and so um I, I gotta say if you don't have it get it um uh, be warned about some of the issues with the homing and if you don't have homing switches then no big deal right whatever um but uh it's definitely worth the investment so there you go that's the video i hope you enjoyed it um if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below if you liked the video appreciate a thumbs up if you didn't like the video as always i would appreciate a thumbs up anyway don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell. Um, it's really important these days to subscribe uh, so we can get back into the, the YouTube creator program should I ever want to make any money off of this channel, which is suspect at best. But uh, definitely would appreciate the subscriptions and the watching of the video. So again, any questions, leave them down below and hope to see everyone soon. Thanks everyone.